What? What is this? <laughs> Pathetic. She's so fat, she's so gross, she will never find love. Pathetic. The only one who can love this woman is the good lord up above the mountain pathetic. She will never change, she will always stay the same. Pathetic and insane. Pathetic. Belly scary, he no carry. Hey, 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 yeah. Damn, I'm jet lag. Hello, little gherkins. Well, Flip Flopping Fuckhead has, of course, waddled back her huge announcement of going back to Canada. She blames being impulsive, but I think it's more than that. We've got a video and a live stream to cover, so let's get into it. Hello, guys. Salam alaikum. Welcome back to another video. So, um, I have a very special meal. Uh, this is um, Tawiya, Tawiya, I'll put the spelling here, Tawiya, it's um, a plate of um, different kinds of cheeses, um, we have like craft cheese with um, some feta, some cream, fresh cream, halloumi, and labna, so yes, yeah, it's very delicious, and with some vegetables, um, mint, and some jam in the middle, and we have some fresh bread, we have some falafel and pickles, and a chicken sandwich and some um, hummus. I'm not gonna eat all of this, but I'm gonna eat some of it and then save the rest. If you think this is an insane amount of food, just wait. She sure seems chipper, doesn't she? Interesting. A lot of you are not gonna understand what I'm about to say or where I'm coming from. And um, I know that, that that's gonna happen. So I have another announcement. And I know people think I'm trolling and I'm doing this for views, but so I'm going to try to explain the best I can to make you kind of understand. And some of you just won't. How I feel right now and how I've been feeling is like I'm in a tug of war, okay? So like Canada, Kuwait, West, East, East, West, West, East, East, West. And it's actually very confusing for me because I come from Canada, right? When I'm in Canada, I miss my family here, and when I'm here, I obviously miss my family there. I get moments where I just want to go back to being a mess, because changing is a lot harder. I want to go back to just sitting on a reclining couch and being buzzed out of my mind and just Mario beating. What she's saying here is revealing a lot more than she thinks. She is absolutely miserable in Kuwait. I truly believe her only tug of war is not wanting to prove everyone right that said this wouldn't last. But then I really think about it because you know I'm impulsive. And I think, do I really want that? Do I really want to go back to that? And instead of thinking I'm setting up a whole new life alone on my own. Pay attention to what she's saying. This wasn't about health. This wasn't about imaging for her leg. This was specifically about leaving Salah. This was leaving Kuwait and Islam. She wants her old life back. And how can I leave my family here? Like, how can I leave my family? I mean, my husband and my pets. I never said the healthcare was cheaper here. At least I don't remember saying that, which doesn't make sense because the healthcare in Canada is covered, you know, completely. No, you said Kuwait was so much cheaper than Canada in general. You've raved about how cheap the food is and other costs of living in general since the day you arrived. You've also said the healthcare was superior in Kuwait because there are no wait times. You did not say it's cheaper which is a weird thing to even say since Canada has free health care, but you made an extra effort to convince us all that health care in Kuwait was extremely affordable for expats. We were all here. Unlike you, we remember your lies. But I remember how hard it is. It's almost impossible to get a family physician. Anytime I would go to the clinic, if you don't go line up at 8 a.m., the clinic fills up very quickly. Just like, it's universal, right? So there's going to be long wait times. No system is perfect. No matter where I am, I have to get a grip on a lot of things that have nothing to do with anyone else but me. A rare moment of clarity. Changing continents isn't necessarily going to change her life. She has a lot of work to do on herself. But I can't help but wonder how much sitting in that apartment day in and day out with no human interaction other than her husband is contributing to her declining mental health and exasperating her eating disorder. I'm just very torn. This is a chicken going sandwich. I'm just gonna eat half. I don't have like a huge, this is like the first thing I've eaten today. Chantal, you just told us yesterday you're sleeping for at least 14 hours per day. 
Please stop with the first meal of the day bullshit. The thing is, is like, I'm sorry that I changed my mind so many times and just confused people. I get my family's hopes up because of course they would prefer to have me close. But they also just want me to make my own decisions to be happy. Which, you know, I'm glad they, they think that way. What I'm down about right now, honestly, why I seem down is because of my indecisiveness. And it would be fine if it just affected me, but it affected other people around me. Then I will. So I'm going to stick it out here. Imagine describing making your living situation and marriage work as sticking with it. They are newlyweds. It has been one year. These should be the times that she's the happiest. They should be making memories and enjoying each other's company. In the first year, she has considered going back to Canada multiple times. We know this just from the few times she's announced it. That's not a good sign at all about the stability and compatibility of this relationship. Even in Canada, I would isolate a lot. There's a lot of me problems I have to work on no matter what country I'm in. I'll just stick it out. And so I assured me, like, don't worry about money for healthcare because I feel like a burden. He's like, don't worry about that. If you need tests, we'll get them. Like, don't worry. Why wouldn't these conversations happen prior to her deciding and announcing to YouTube that she would be leaving partially due to not being able to afford mental health or medical treatment? Because let's be clear, she focuses a lot on how Salah says he'll pay for imaging in this video, but a big part of her original announcement was because mental health treatment is so expensive in Kuwait. But regardless, why is this conversation between a married couple taking place after it's announced to the internet? This just tells me every excuse she gave was bullshit, and this entire debacle was all because of a fight between her and Salah. I don't know. I just feel bad, like... I don't know. I know a lot of you are not gonna... understand. My love for the Middle East. I never understood it until I came here, and I fell in love with it. What could she have possibly fallen in love with? She never leaves that apartment. She's seen what? The beach? The desert? Some old boats? Some camels? An abandoned school? A couple of parks? And the mall? She hasn't experienced the culture at all. Chantal is in love with the idea of marriage and being in Kuwait, even though her specific situation is a sham. I also have... Um... I feel like if I went back to Canada, I'd have to be burdened with, like, a legal battle against someone who literally stalks me. You have to say, oh, whatever. This doesn't stalk you. Excuse me? This psycho drove from their city to where I was to go check out somewhere I was shopping at. It doesn't matter the reason. That alone is psychotic behavior. And it's happened more than once. So that's a small factor that I would have to deal with. And I, I just don't want to be in the same country as those people either. <laughs> I'm not physically afraid of the person, I'm just, I don't have to deal with it legal matters. Chantal, talking about FFG being such a stalker and psycho, without ever doing anything about it, is so played out. Like, you're clearly not that bothered, and you just admitted you're not physically scared of her. So, why is this even a talking point? She claimed to want to go back to Canada for affordable health care and a support system. Then she said it was so she could lay around getting high playing Mario Kart. And her deterrent for any of that is FFG? Be fucking for real. I can't bring myself to imagine living my life without the support of my husband. You can think what you want of him, but he's a very supportive husband in a lot of ways. Ways that I would miss a lot on a daily basis, you know? I would love for her to actually list ways that he's supportive. I think her definition of supportive is that he doesn't give her a hard time or tell her no to ordering and eating massive quantities of food. I don't know why I'm explaining myself, but probably because I announced that I'm going to Canada and now I have to explain why I'm not. <laughs> and that's why I'm not. And that's my final decision. I will not be recanting because I can't get doing that. I mean, obviously, if I really want to go back, I will, but I feel like food beauty is truly gone. I think people who say that I'm bigger here don't remember the days when I first moved into the villa. I was over 400 pounds. I wasn't happy either. Less so. I didn't believe in God. I had a huge amount of apathy. If that picture was supposed to prove she's not as big as she was back then, she's absolutely delusional. I love how she's just telling on herself over and over. She wasn't happy then either. Way to admit you're not happy in your new marriage and life, Goral. I'm just disappointed. Like, I wish I wasn't so impulsive. That's my major beef with myself right now. I will, um... Try to stay focused on my marriage, Ramadan. By the way, I don't know why I have to even say this, but some people actually believe 
when I'm being sarcastic. <sighs> My husband only has one wife. Yeah. He doesn't sleep out of the apartment. We live together. We are married. Again, we have to legally be. Ask the ministry yourself if you want to. Whatever. How are people going to believe someone who doesn't live our life over us? Like, or somebody who has no proof. You can roll your eyes and scoff all you want, but you know what you're doing. You know exactly how to get people talking. You've been doing this long enough to know better. A lot of the time, you know, if we're not going up together, he asks me to come along with him. A lot of the time, I don't feel like it. I'm isolated because I self-isolate. I can go up anytime I want. Just say, can you take me here? Fine, you know. A lot of the time, he encourages me to go out. When I'm in a rut, I don't feel like it. A lot of the time. If we're not together, he's video chatting me. Excuse me. The whole time. So, or, or most of the time. <clears throat> Sending me pictures when he's somewhere. Does she actually think this is some flex? This is weird. If you can't be away from your partner without being on video call every single time you're away from each other, that's not healthy. Also, how is Sala video calling you at all times when he's out of the house if he has a job? That math ain't mathing, girl. So, I've said that a million times, so I guess that's, I'm going to make that the last time I say that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I made a joke, I was sarcastic because people, haters or reaction channels are always saying, he has more than one life, um, he lives in another apartment, but then like how can we afford all these apartments and wives? Because you have to provide for your wives, you can't just, like legally you can't just marry another wife if you're a broke ass, you know? So, <laughs> <coughs> like you guys really, really know nothing. You speculate, but you're so wrong on a lot of things. But yeah, they'll say like, um, he has another wife, blah, blah, blah. And whatever, I mean, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt because rumors are rumors. But just know, there's no truth to them. And I was being sarcastic and like, yes, like playing into that, you know, whatever delusion they have. But um, <laughs> there's really nothing, nothing there. Big fat, nothing burger as usual. You know, I, I hear a lot of people come to me and say that, that, oh, this reaction channel has so many uh, dumb conspiracy theories and whenever they're proven to be not true um, or inconsistent with, with the truth, people just breeze by it and go for the next conspiracy theory. Because for the most part, nobody actually gives a shit about any of this to the extent that you do, Chantal. I've said it before, but this is the equivalent of us talking about a TV show with our friends. This is reality TV for us. You know, but yet people latch on to every little single thing I say. And it's so weird. I don't know, it's like odd behavior. And people are just not like that here. People are just not weird like that. They don't have that mentality. Like, maybe some people, but I've never encountered anyone like that here. And, uh, yeah. Um, are we just forgetting Allah? He's the reason we know you don't sit right. He has exposed you multiple times. In fact, so has Murad to some extent. Your own husband made reaction channels. Literally everyone you know in Kuwait is involved in this shit, Goral. And I'm not saying all people are like that in the West, obviously, but I have a lot of awesome followers and you guys are cool and I love you guys, but all of the weirdo people who are obsessed with me and it's like, they ha I don't know. I don't know the mentality of people who follow people like that whatsoever. Chantal, you watch all of us. You sit there and obsessively watch every single video and tweet about you. Hell, you know more about what reaction channels are saying than even other reaction channels. So anyways, um, I guess that's all I have to say. I'm going to continue to work on myself, try to seek help here, um, you know. So, so that means a lot of insisting I don't have to worry about, you know, the monetary side of the healthcare. So I'll just trust, trust in him on that. And uh, I guess that takes away a big stress. And um, here's a crazy idea. Stop spending all of your money on takeout and you could afford your health care. I mean, I, like the healthcare I've utilized so far hasn't been pricey, but the point is in Canada, everything is just free, like because it's covered, right? But there's long wait times. There's always a pro and a con to everything. So, so no matter where I am, and I have to ultimately decide where I'm most happy, happiest with my new mindset, my new faith in God. As a Muslim, I just feel more comfortable being here for a lot of reasons. And um, the cost of living is just also lower. I keep forgetting that, you know, like just looking at like one bedroom apartments when I was thinking of going back for a while, because I like to have my ultimate privacy. I can stay with my mom as long as I want, but like I like to have privacy, you know? And just bed rot in peace. <laughs> that's, <clears throat> that's what I feel like my life would be like if I go back. Just bed rotting even more, you know? Because being totally alone, I'm a little afraid of that. 
I'm a little afraid of how deep a hole I'll dig myself into. I'll just be alone with all of my addictions, nothing else. There won't be anyone to tell me no at all for anything. I can just see myself, Uber Eats. I mean, I'm ordering out now here too, but I don't know, it's like way more affordable. <laughs> and I usually just do it like, I could see myself ordering like a whole bunch of junk food all the time, you know, instead of just for dinner. I don't know. This is a lot of bullshit. Every excuse she comes up with for why she doesn't want to move back to Canada either doesn't make sense or she's making it up on the spot. She's trying so hard to convince us that she truly wants to be in Kuwait, but it's very clear that deep down she doesn't. The fact that she justifies ordering out every single day by saying it's more affordable, she reiterates that she doesn't give a shit about her health at all. I feel like I would slip further and further away from my faith in Islam because, I don't know, I just feel like I would like go back to a lot of old habits I don't want to. And I've come all this way, you know? Even if a lot of you don't see any changes, that's fine. Um, I don't need you to. So, that's about it. I'm still super tired. I don't know, like... This medication I'm taking for my leg, for my sciatica, makes me really, like... It's a diclonifac or something? Diclonifac. It's called Olfin, and it's like an analgesic medication, but it, fine, it makes me, like, drowsy. Even though it's, like, I don't know. And then my... Cyprolex. I don't know. I, take, I took it like about two hours ago, so I'm feeling pretty drowsy. <laughs> anyway, and I am exhausted with myself, battling myself and what I should do and all this and that. And I appreciate your opinions. I know most of my audience is still from my times in Canada and a Western audience. A lot of most who have not visited the Middle East. So I understand you don't really understand the vibe. You don't understand what I'm going through. And you're thinking, why wouldn't you choose Canada, you know? Um, but the Middle East, like people, I read some of the comments and you, like, people are not stoned here. Like, it's actually pretty free. It's like, you know, women can do whatever. And, um, I just, I guess I was just missing my family back in Canada. And also some things about my old lifestyle that weren't comfortable. But yeah. There's no growth in that, in that lifestyle at all. It's more entertaining for a lot of people, but for me, it's not healthy. I don't know. I was on a downward spiral. And I have a lot of bad memories and stuff like that. So I just, I feel like this is more home now, if I can explain it more, like I, I do. Because culturally and religiously, I've just experienced so much here that it just feels weird going back there. I don't know. But I will visit my family and stuff. So at least once a year. <laughs> I'll try to, inshallah. So, I guess that's it, enough rambling. I don't think, I think I confuse people even more with this video. But that's the best I can explain it. That's the best I can do. She's literally just talking out of her ass. What culture has she experienced in Kuwait? She never leaves the damn apartment. She doesn't know anybody. She has no friends. What religion has she experienced? She hasn't read the Quran. She hasn't been to the mosques. She only interacts with Salah. When I was growing up and I over-explained a situation, my dad would always ask, who are you trying to convince, me or yourself? And this is exactly the vibes of this video. Chantal isn't trying to convince us that she's happy. She's trying to convince herself. Anyway, let's get into the live stream that she did right after this video. I worry about you. I know, thanks guys. And you know, I don't mean to like, play with your feelings or anything. I'm just a very conflicted person. So I just come on here and I'm just like honest about how I'm feeling and you know, yada, yada, yada. So it's not easy like living in two different countries, like being from one country, moving to another. Of course, you're going to like miss your home sometimes, you know, but um, got to remember why I came here in the first place, you know. What does that even mean? According to you and everything we've seen, you went to Kuwait for Salah, nothing more. Clearly, you're having second thoughts about that choice. I don't want to be a burden. I just, yeah, I don't, I, I mean, he doesn't make me feel like a burden. Salah doesn't, you know, it's just that I myself have that insecurity where I, that's like one of the worst things I don't want to be, you know. But you are a burden. You require massive amounts of food, expensive health care due to your massive caloric intake. You can't walk. You're extremely mentally ill. You require attention 24-7. You can hardly cook or clean. I'm not even trying to be mean. 
It's just true. You admit yourself later that it takes a lot to be with you, and it's not easy for someone to take that on, but yet you do nothing to change any of those things. You're content with being a burden. No, I, wh why would I lie about that? You know, you guys know how I am. I've changed my mind many times about it. You know, this time it was within not even 24 hours, but... Because I, I make that decision, and then I think about, like, the logistics of it. Um, it's overwhelming to me to go back there and set up a life there. I almost feel like I would be going backwards there and forwards if I'm here. I don't know why, that's just my mentality, and I just always never... I don't remember that when I make that decision, you know? That's what you're attempting to convince yourself. The fact is, you're going to be a mess anywhere you go, because you do absolutely nothing to improve your mental situation. I think my mental health is all internal, like no matter where I am, I always bring my depression and my eating disorder and all of my problems with me, so... No shit. I'm not going to Canada, no. I think I made that decision in haste. Um, I think I really need to try to wait at least 24 hours before I make announcements. I never learned this. But part of the reason I don't want to go to Canada is... We don't want to... Um, everything, like the cost of living is, is better here. If you're Muslim, it's more inviting. I think it would be a really big culture shock, like, for Salah right now. And we just, we're not ready to go there right now, so... Um, I think it's just better. And I don't know, I'm kind of afraid to take the plane right now. After what I went through last time, I think that's what happened with my back, is the long flight. I'm not, I really didn't think it through. I, I kind of announced it, not realizing, hey, I have people, like, listening to everything I say and taking it, you know, in a certain Ready, way. Ready, set. What does Sala have to do with this now? Don't try pretending you were talking about both of you going to Canada. You were very specific that you'd be going without him. Now you're saying, we don't want to go right now. You're really trying to manipulate this hard. No, I'm, I'm going to be Kuwait season. But I, I do need to get out more and, and, and build a life here. If, I think it's because I always feel in limbo. I'm not sure what's gonna ha what I'm going to do, you know, from one minute to another. So if I just commit and start, you know, building a life here, getting serious about my health, and just, you know, realizing, like, okay, I'm here for a few years, you know, inshallah, then, you know. Why would you have to realize that you'll be there for a few years? I thought this was a permanent move because you hate Canada. Sounds to me like Chantal just let it slip that she has never intended for Kuwait to be a permanent move. There's a time frame that she'll be there until she comes back to Canada. You seem more at peace in Kuwait. I definitely, definitely am in a lot of ways. I don't know how to explain it. I guess I can't really convey it as much as, you know, I have a limit to that, but... <sighs> I swear these VIBs are dumb as hell. She literally just had a meltdown, announcing her mental health is on a downward spiral, and these idiots are over there saying she's so much more at peace in Kuwait. No, she's bored and tired. There's a difference. Yeah, exactly, Blue Pot. I have to build a life here, you know? But I feel like Salah is my friend, too. Like, we do everything together, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it would be nice. You know, he does have his own friends, and I, I have my own... I should have my own, but I'm not... Because of my, like, depressant depression, I go through states where I don't want to be social at all. Do you think Salah is actually happy? Yeah, I think so, because, you know, he really didn't want me to leave. Um, he said some really sweet things about me staying, and it's true, I can't picture, you know, he's like, I can't, we can't picture our lives without each other. We, like, you know, we've, we're building something here together, and, yeah, I don't want to just give up on that. I think talking out, like, my feelings in those two videos about, like, you know, how I'm feeling about being in both places, it's just, I can't describe how chaotic my mind is sometimes, you know? I, like, like I said, it feels like a tug of war within myself. If you have to base your husband's alleged happiness on something nice he said when you threaten to leave, you may have some communication issues. But you're so isolated with no friends that even the slightest nice comment will make you fold like Ambie's ankle on that curb. Am I still feeling depressed? Not at the moment. I went through a few days of depression and like I like when I'm like that, I sleep all day. And you know, whenever like Salah has no experience with these problems. Like he, it's new to him, right? So it's, it's hard. Like, I remember my grandmother being very depressed and, like, she basically, um, at one point was, like, told everyone to get out of her house. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Whenever you're really depressed like that, it's hard to be around anybody because you just can't even, like, communicate properly, you know? Yeah, it can. I do use my channel. I've always done that to, like, process things and talk things out, kind of like a journal, you know? So even though I like to keep things private, it doesn't always work out that way. And, I mean, people are going to judge me anyway, you know? If they're not judging me on what I say and my journey and my truth, they're judging me on my pillow placement. So I may as well just be outright out front because you know i have a lot of you guys who actually like support me and care about me and that means a lot you know chantal absolutely always wants to have her cake and eat it too both physically and metaphorically my family gets excited every time i say i'm gonna move back at first they're like always like you know i know how you're impulsive cutie and maybe you know work it like just you know basically like you have a family there now try to like stay there if you can and but then they get excited because they're skeptical of me like changing my mind and they always say too like 
you know, they're happy. They miss me, obviously. Like, my mom misses me all the time, and she says it every day. My aunt so much. My sister, you know, I feel so bad she got so excited, but... Remember how I said Chantal always tells on herself? She said her family gets excited every time she tells them she's moving back, which means this has happened multiple times, not just the three times she's disclosed to us. Yeah, I have a nice little group of people going, and I, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate it for everyone. And, I, like, people think I don't listen to their advice or whatever. Trust me, I know I have to make a change with my health. I agree with that for everything. But other things, I don't think that people understand, like, what's going in my mind and my thought thought process of change and, like, how I do feel more at peace in the Middle East. <laughs> I don't... I really do. I know it seems more boring. Like, people think it's boring because I can't drive. Well, I'm going to show you. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing a lot. I'm going to try to go out at least, if I can, at least once a day, you know, even just walking or something around the beach. I'm late to this video. We have not seen an outing. She can never stick to anything. I didn't make ever make it try to make it seem like he wasn't supportive, you know, but I do miss my family and it makes me sad sometimes, you know, like it really does. We talk about life a lot. That's mostly what we talk about, you know, and um, yeah, I don't know. He he said the sweetest thing to me like about staying and I won't say it because it's private unless you want me to, babe, but <laughs> you know. But just basically how hard it is, you know, he, he, he's so, so, so lonely when I'm not here and I really would miss him too. So there's that, you know, like husband and wife should be together to work on things. And Husbands also shouldn't cheat on their wives with their subscribers, but here we are. Connie, I have to get out of the apartment. That doesn't help. Isolating yourself inside. You know what though? Like, I don't know. I look out the window sometimes and I see everyone living a busy life and it's sunny and I feel gross. I feel like, ugh, close the curtains. I don't know why it makes me miserable. I don't know. That's when I get in those depressive moods, you know? This is all these things are new to him and he, these problems would scare away anyone and he's willing to stick with me through all of these things and you know he's he is very supportive. Honestly the a bit of the ad, I'm going to be honest with you guys you know how I'm like have an addictive personality and you know um Canada has some really good pain meds and when you're in pain all I kept thinking is like oh I could easily go get like um Lyrica I could probably get some like really good strong pain meds if I if I needed to because the pain is bad. But then I'm like, I could see why, you know, they don't want to get people on meds like that here, why they kind of ban those meds here. Um, and they just give you like non-narcotic kind of pain relievers. Like the Olfin does work, but it doesn't get you addicted. So it's, you know, I, I could see myself going back and just like using that as an excuse to just never change and just fall back into old habits and just, you know, drive around getting drive through because I'm alone and I don't have anyone like, you know, I don't know, seeing me do any of these things. And you know, like, I think it's just kind of, I, I'm scared to go back on, like, wheelchairs because I do still crave them sometimes, you know? So there's a lot of just things going through my mind. So now she wanted to go back to Canada so she could get pain pills. Girl, she has come up with every possible reason she could possibly want to go back and almost no reason for staying. So I need to, like, really, like, try to not need so much health care. So I need to do some preventative care. Like, I need to get on a healthy diet and move more. That's it. That would be so healing in a lot of ways. Yeah, my feet are okay. I can feel them. Chantal... It's no longer preventative at this point. It's life-saving measures. I can't imagine basing the health of your limb on whether or not you can feel them. Anyway, I have been super swamped at work this week, so I'm very behind on this edit and upload. You may have noticed the discrepancy in the timeline of this one as I started editing it two days ago. Better late than never, right? I'll get to the live and grocery haul from yesterday as soon as possible, and I'll see you later, little gherkins. Pathetic. She's so fat, she's so gross, she will never find love. Pathetic. The only one who can love this woman is a good lord up above.